Hi, this is Abul Hussein coming to you direct from London, the United Kingdom, and welcome to another episode of the SMMA Mastermind podcast, where we talk about how you can start or scale your agency, and we also bring on subject matter experts who teach us how we can deliver exceptional results for our clients or for our own businesses. Now, if you are watching this video outside of our Facebook group, make sure to find the link above or below this video or go to smmamastermind.com. Now, with that out of the way, I have a very special guest joining me all the way from Costa Rica right now. I have been trying to get hold of him for a while, but he is a very busy man. His name is Paul Cuisino. He is the co-owner of the Digital Navigator. And if you remember, we had Jim Tracer from there a couple of months ago. And also Paul is a certified CPA from Quebec, Canada. So he's not just your digital guy, he is a serious businessman. And we are going to talk about SEO and how you can apply it to your business starting from today. Paul, welcome to the show. Hi, Abul, and hi, everyone. I'm really happy to be here with each and every one of you. And it'll be my goal today to make sure that you have some practical tips that you can apply and then start getting leads for yourself or for your clients through the different search engines, whether that's Google, Yahoo, Bing, DuckDuckGo, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Now, Paul, before we jump into the meat and bones of SEO, how about a little bit of an introduction? You know, I mentioned you were a CPA and now you're a co-owner of a digital marketing agency. How did you get into the agency space? Well, I appreciate you asking, and uh, it would be a very long-winded story if I explained the twists and turns, but uh, what I really like about the digital space is the ability to create the freedom for myself, shape the life how I want. You mentioned at the start that I'm in Costa Rica, and that was fully possible because I have a digital agency. If I had a traditional job or I worked with a classic CPA firm, that wouldn't have been possible for me. And I really took a liking to the online space when I ventured off into becoming an entrepreneur. And I said, well, how am I going to get my clients? How am I going to get my leads? And I dabbled in websites, dabbled in email marketing, different areas. And then I was part of a mastermind group. And in that mastermind group, I was explaining how I was going to be relaunching an online community. And out of that, mastermind there were about six to eight people that wanted me to apply the same strategy I was going to use for a relaunch for their businesses and I took them on as clients I really started to enjoy the work and then I quickly realized that I needed some support hire the first person within a couple months and then the rest is history as they say okay that's that's awesome now Coming to the subject of SEO, um, where does one start? You know, it's such a broad topic. Um, you know, fr from your perspective, what do you, you know, what, what is SEO? SEO is search engine optimization. And if we put it very simply, it is the art and science of getting leads and sales through different search engines. And there's a few different components here. So one of them is the leads and the sales. I would presume that your audience knows what that is. And that being said, it is important to say that a lead must be qualified. It has to be someone that is interested in your product or service that has the potential for purchasing so that you can convert them eventually into a client. Now, the search engine, that would be any software or tool that you can enter a search query such as what is the best business podcast and then get different types of answers. And then that those results would compromise the search engine experience. So in SEO, what we're trying to do is get a particular website or resource to appear in those search results when the search query, where the person is typing is relevant for that particular business. And relevancy is very key in this industry. 
uh, it may be possible to rank for a lot of search terms without them being relevant for your leads or your prospects. And what that means is that the traffic would never result in revenue. And when you're doing this professionally, either for yourself or your clients, it's important that it translates in actual revenue. Right. Now, how do you get started? There are three components to successful and a successful SEO campaign. The first one is the technical foundation of your website or the resource. The second one is the quality of the content that you're publishing. What is that resource that will be found or indexed by the search engine? And then the third one is what people commonly call backlinks, or you could call it authority. And that is the number of external sites or resources that have links to your resource. So just like you have a network, if many professionals are saying, a bull is the guy to get your agency to the next level, the more people are seeing that, the more authority you will have, and then the more people will come and see you. So that is what we look at for the backlinks, which is a third component. And I would say people should prioritize it in that order. Technical first, then quality content, and finally backlinks, which most people get it wrong or they get sold the good of bills, which is buy all my links from third-party sources and then that'll get ranked. Uh-huh. So, I mean, when you talk about technical SEO, what do you exactly mean? So I could be talking countless hours about this. And what I'll do is I'll keep it very practical for your audience. So technical SEO means that you have the appropriate coding for the different search engines, such as Google, that they can understand your resource or your website properly. And they have guidelines that they give you so that their robots have the easiest way of understanding what your business is about. There is a tool that we use for that, which is called Ahrefs. That is A-H-R-E-F. Com? There might be an S now as I'm as I'm spelling it out, uh, but you'll you'll be able to find it through the search engine if you type Ahref, and that is a professional SEO tool. They have a trial that is very low dollar, but they also have a free resource now where you can do what's called a site audit, and you can enter your website right now or the website of your client there. It's a free service that they provide. I'm not directly affiliated with them. I use their tool. And then what, I, what that will do is it will tell you the health of your website from a technical standpoint. And an easy way to, uh, to understand that is in terms of coding best practices, and now I'll get a little bit technical, there is something that is called headers, and that is in HTML. And you may see that in your code if it says H1, H2, H3, and so forth. Each page on your website should have what's called a title tag and an H1 tag. And that's very easy to see when you're editing something in WordPress, for example. But it should only have one. So now if your web page does not have this or it has multiple of the H1 or header one, the search engine will be confused about the purpose of that specific page. So then the Ahrefs tool will tell you, missing H1 tag or multiple H1, and then it'll give you a recommendation on how to fix that. Other types of recommendations that it may give you is each image should have what's called an alt description. And that is used if there's a coding error and your image cannot be displayed or someone might be accessing your website through an accessi accessibility tool. If let's say they have an impairment or a disability. And then that will describe what the image is. Well, each of your images needs to have a proper and relevant description. And if they don't, then that will penalize you. And then there's a huge laundry list of all those technical checkpoints that you need to have for the search engine to say, when a visitor goes to this website, you will have an optimal experience. And the customer of the search engine is the person that is entering the search query that's looking for information. The last thing that, let's say, Google or Yahoo wants is to send visitors to a website that's buggy, you don't know what the images are, the headlines are all odd and difficult. 
or a very slow website. So if you don't want to get all the technical work done, you can already get a boost by moving to a fast host or a managed service to give optimal loading time to your users. And that will impact your search ranking. So if you use a budget service like HostGator, GoDaddy, uh, there's other budget services like Wix and Weebly, you're going to have a slower performance, which will reduce your ranking. Right, great. And okay, so we've got technical covered there. Um, very practical, the way you've explained it. And the, the tool, Ahrefs, that you can go put in a URL, sign up for a free trial, and it's great. Good quality content. What is good quality content? People have different ideas about this, but from your perspective, what does good content look like? The good content provides an optimal experience for the person reading or accessing your content. So we have to think about that first and foremost. So the first mistake that we make is saying, how can I get this content piece to rank? Or how can I fulfill my own agenda as a business? But instead, we need to turn it upside down and think, a person that will be reading this article or accessing this page, what are they looking for? Why are they here? And we have one of our clients is very interesting. He does pest control services in Texas. And then what we published there was the ultimate guide on Texas rats. And in that guide, we could have simply said, hey, here's what to look for in a pest control company. But someone that is, let's say, entering in Google, they might say, do I have rats or mice in my house? Or uh, is there like a do-it-yourself way of treating and solving a rat infestation problem? Or what should I do to keep rats out? Are there many types of rats? Are rats dangerous? So what will happen is that as they're entering all of those different search queries, they're looking for very specific information. So that's why that in the content, we have these sections and it is like semi-annual do-it-yourself inspections for rats and rodents. And then we have all of the steps there, which is very useful for the person, even if they decide not to engage our client. And if there is no value from the content, if you don't pursue the relationship further, it's probably not of high quality because it needs to have value on its own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people talk about the length of content. So a couple of years ago, uh, some people were saying it has to be a minimum of 300 words. Now people are saying 500 words, others are saying 800 words. Is there an optimal length to get Google's attention? If you're starting off, I would say shoot for 1500 words or more. And the reason is you need to have sufficient length to provide that value. So how much can you share in 300 or 400 words? Not a lot. I mean, this is not like Twitter, right? That we're working on. So you're trying to provide value to that person and really give them the most comprehensive and complete information about what they're searching for. Now, if you have the gumption for it, I would say go for 4,000 or more. And what we do is we call that a pillar post. And why I recommend that is because that will be one of the easiest piece of content for you to rank, which will then you get give you that motivation and that excitement to take it further. So going back to the example of the ultimate guide for Texas rats, that was the first piece of content we published for that client. And it was over 4,000 words. And we are competing with companies that have many millions of dollars that they're investing in SEO and other types of marketing services. And this was a small local client. And we were able to take the top rankings because we had the most comprehensive information about that. So that's why the, the words are important. And then what you can do is you can have companion guides or resources, and those one might be around 1,500 words each. 
Now, if the number of words is going to prevent you from getting started, make it maybe a thousand or fifteen hundred words, and then add chapters to it. You can add more sections, and then have a table of content at the start where people can click and then jump to the different sections. And we have a guide like that that we started on sales funnel stages, which was about four thousand words, and today is over nine thousand words because we kept adding wow. and adding. To that resources so it's very comprehensive the other tip for writing that is breaking it down by headers which are the topics and the points that you're going to want to cover in that article now if you use a tool like hrefs and there's other ones out there there's SEM rush and i know there's a few other competitors that you can locate i just personally like hrefs but when you enter in there, you can have what's called the keyword, which is the search term. So then still you can see two metrics that are going to give you a sweet spot. One is called volume, which is the estimated number of people that are searching for this every month. And the second one will be a difficulty score. In Ahrefs, it's called KD, but it, there's different terms, but it's a difficulty score. And what you're looking for is enough volume for it to be worth your while but then a very low difficulty score so that you can rank, especially if you're starting off on this. And if you're using a tool like Ahrefs, I would say anything lower than 10 difficulty, 10 or lower would be very good out of 100. And then in terms of volume, maybe you just hit something that's like 200 to 500 a month, knowing that if you can get maybe 10 or 20% of that audience, then that will bring you, let's say out of 200, that could bring you uh, maybe somewhere between 20 and 50 relevant visitors a month to your website. And then they'll read that resource. They'll see that you're the authority on the subject because it'll be very comprehensive. And then you'll have a lead magnet, a contact form, a call number, or a way to convert that into your clients. And when you've got that term, it'll recommend related search terms. So then what you can do is you look at the related search terms in that professional tool and you use that to make your sections in your article. So then you have multiple search intent in that same article. And then you just need to fill in the blank for each of those sections using your expertise on the topic. Right. That's, that's a great practical tip on how you can get started, you know, especially finding the low hanging fruit. So we've covered the technical SEO. We've talked about content, what makes good content, and you've given some great practical advice that someone can apply today for themselves or for their clients. The final part, and you know, this is something that anybody who has been doing SEO for a while has heard a lot about backlinks. You know, how do you effectively build backlinks in 2021 without getting penalized? I'll start with a funny statement. If I'm selling you backlinks, you don't want them. And that's how you're going to avoid getting penalized because there's all these brokers that sell these links and then have private link networks and there's all of that out there. And what happens is unless you absolutely know who your vendor is and what those links are, which will probably be very difficult for you to vet unless you have an inside scoop on how they're operating. They're selling links to everyone and their business is selling as many links to as many people as possible. But that is actually against the guidelines of Google, which is the dominant search engine as we're recording this. So then as they continue expanding, the risk of that company being detected for what would be a fraudulent practice increases. And eventually, as they get detected, the whole network will get penalized. And if you bought from them, then you can get a penalty on your website. So you could see a lift in your traffic and then eventually a huge dip because you're getting those penalties. So I'd say avoid that unless you absolutely know what you're doing. So that's how to avoid the penalty. Now, how do you get the backlinks? It starts again with that quality content. Once you have that guide or that article published, you should make a list of target websites where you can make a contribution of value. And that might even be like being on this podcast and then talking about that specific article. 
and having that link in the show notes because it's a resource for the listeners. And then that would create a backlink. But you would create that list of targets and hopefully you know your industry enough to see, well, what are the publications where I could be pushing this? Otherwise, those SEO tools like Ahrefs will also show you all the different pages that have content on those topics. Then you will craft a series of emails to reach out to them. You can look at the contact form on their page. You can look at maybe uh, the author pages, other contact details, social no networks, and you will personalize it. Do not give a cookie cutter email to everyone because everyone knows that. And I immediately put it in the trash. You, as you're listening to this, you probably put it to the trash. So don't do just the cookie cutter. And then you start off by saying, I'm reaching out because I'd like to make a contribution to your blog, to your website, to your podcast, and provide value to your audience. Would you be interested in me publishing an article on one of these three topics? And publishing an article is the easiest way to do it. So that's why I'm putting this as an example. You provide multiple topics so that they just don't say, no, I don't like this option, right? They might like option number two. So you give them a few different choices. And then you keep it very short. So once they tell you that they're interested, then you'll follow up and say, do you have any writing guidelines? I want to make sure this is going to be valuable, et cetera. And normally they're going to tell you what they're looking for. And then you will craft that article for their website. Generally, those are smaller articles, but they might have different requirements. And in that, you will include one or two links to resources on your website. And you're also going to include links to one to three external resources. So what that will do is one, they're not going to be as tempted to remove the link from your article because they might actually do that once you submit it. The second thing is it'll give you credibility. By mentioning these external resources, it's not all about you. And then the readers, it'll feel more normal rather than being like some kind of advertising for your company. And then number three is you're also paying it forward. And for me, it just makes good sense to recommend resources. So then they're going to be publishing it. I would say reaching out to 10 targets a week for about a month for one article that you have would be a good starting point. And then depending on your success ratio, you should be able to get one to on the high end, perhaps four confirmed guest post or guest podcast appearances per week. So then by the end of your month, you're going to try to get somewhere between uh, maybe four to 10 of those backlinks, and then you'll be publishing it on their platform. Now, I will tell you, because you might encounter this, they say, oh, there's a small fee of $45 to post it on my website. That's normal. It's paying for the webmaster fee because they have to pay a developer to publish that, coordinate with you, et cetera. And I would say that is different than what I was talking about as a backlink broker when you asked me the question. And then that will slowly get you ranked. And then as your network builds out, people will organically start referring your articles. But that won't happen at first because you're not necessarily known or found on the search engine when you started this project. Right. And I suppose... How many backlinks is enough to start ranking? I know it's a million dollar question and maybe there's no easy answer to it. 10 years ago, you could buy SE Nuke or some software like that, build 10,000 backlinks in a week and you will be on page one. Um, how many backlinks does a business need to build to see some movement in the search results? Zero. So that is not a popular opinion and there's whole businesses built on backlinks. So I know a lot of people will disagree with me here, but the answer is zero. And most of our SEO clients were doing very minimal backlink outreach. And when we start an engagement, we normally do not start with backlinks unless the client insists. And going back to the ultimate Texas rat guy, the, we did not do any outreach for more than a year and we were able to more than double his business and then bring in uh, countless numbers of leads monthly within the first eight months 
for that client solely by focusing on all the technical fixes on the website and then building a very high quality resource and it naturally ranked on Google. Now we're starting a little bit of backlinks only to strengthen the position of that client. But you don't actually need any to be successful if you pick the right search term, the right difficulty, and you have technical foundation done and you have high quality content. Awesome. Well, it's been a great but short masterclass on SEO. And, you know, Paul, we've slightly run out of time here, but if someone wants to find out more about SEO or they want to reach out to you, where's the best place for them to find you? Our website, which is thedigitalnavigator.com. You need to have the the in there. So thedigitalnavigator.com. And there's a contact form there. There's a little widget so you can reach our customer service team. And then if you mention this podcast and you see that you're interested in having a conversation with me or you have some questions, our team will forward all that information and I will personally look at that and provide you an answer. Awesome. On that note, Paul, thank you so much for your time. And I really appreciate you hosting me here and allowing me to share this information with your audience. It's a real pleasure to, to do this with you. And I truly value what you're doing here by providing these resources to those different agencies and to these entrepreneurs, because it, most of what we do online is self-learned. And this is a great medium for people to do that learning and take it to the next level. And I encourage everyone to take action on one item that we discuss here in the podcast, starting with the technical foundation of your website. Well, there you go. Take action. And until next time, thank you very much once again, Paul. Bye.